thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon. We are really excited uh, today to launch another one of the LPGA's drive on spots. Um, as many of you know, we started the drive on campaign as a rebrand of the LPGA um, last March, a little over a year and a half, almost a year and a half ago now. Um, we're always excited to tell stories, and I think this is a very special one to all of us as Mo Martin was a part of our very first uh, drive on spot. This is for every girl. So we have our 2014 Rico Women's British Open champion, Mo Martin, joining us here today as well as LPGA Chief Brand and Communications Officer, Roberta Bowman. Thank you both so much uh, for being here and being a part of this wonderful conversation that we get to have, uh, talking about Mo's, Mo's new spot. And uh, we debuted it today on all of our social channels and lpga.com at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And Mo, just really wanna start off with you of what has it meant to see your drive on story now featured as, as part of this campaign and, and how did it sort of come about with the LPGA approaching you to be a part of this? Um, I think, you know, most obviously it's, it's an honor, you know, to, to have a platform and to want to be heard from. Um, and, you know, I just, I felt that vibe from the very beginning at the LPGA and, and the culture that's been created there. You know, it's it's incredibly inclusive, uh, not only from you know diverse backgrounds, uh, but nationalities, and uh, I just I'm honored to be a part of that. And you know, I know that that my story and um, my life in golf has been a bit peculiar, um, but then to you know just be so embraced, you know, from day one, even before winning the British Open, you know, it's um, it's, it's it's validating, and so it's it's an honor to have this platform. When you first saw the spot, that 30 seconds, and it's very emotional and getting to see you tell that story, what was your first reaction to seeing it? Um, I think what people probably don't know is that I'm very bashful. Um, so it was kind of like, ah, it's me. <laughs> um, no, but, but getting over that, you know, it's, um, I love seeing the, my little bag. Um, you know, it's, it's the first camera it's ever seen. Um, and I remember just carrying that around as a child so proudly and, you know, it didn't have any zippers. So I'd have to put my golf balls right down the top. And, you know, I remember times that they would spill out and I was just, but I was just so very proud of that bag. And, you know, then to have the, the split image of a staff bag and then that first, you know, just mailer tube. Um, to me, I mean, it, it's, it's full circle. Um, and again, there's just a lot of validation that comes along with it. And then, you know, it's just happiness to be able to share that with um, everybody who's been a part of it and, and also fans that I've met along the way and everybody's been part of this journey. And you helped pen a beautiful first person piece that we have on LPGA.com, really telling a little bit more in depth about your story. And sometimes it's difficult for people to take that time to, to go back and sort of write it themselves. What was that like for you of putting those words on paper of, of what your journey has been and what was the most important part for you of your message to get across to people? Um, I, I think the word, you know, resonate, you know, with, with people. Um, I think just this human part of the story, I think we all want to feel connected. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, there are so many different parts of that to, you know, the, the friendships to fortuitous meetings along the way to hard lessons. I mean, I think that everybody can relate to. Um, and yeah, it was, it was actually quite fun to, to write, you know, maybe a little bit of writer's block in the beginning. Um, but then there's some untold stories, you know, that I've, I've never actually put out there. Um, you know, which is a little bit scary and a little bit exciting at the same time. Um, and then also, you know, the story about Chichi Rodriguez came back to me as I was writing um, in the airport. I was thinking about Japan and um, thinking about my dad and dropping off the bread and um, and then also just to highlight my mom, um, she's been a quiet force in my life, uh, but that, that week before the British when she told me to never doubt myself was um, huge, you know, and I still by my bed, I have um, a little handwritten note, you know, from her and, uh, you know, she's been a real, you know, like I said, quiet driving force in my life, but she hasn't really gotten the recognition. So a part of this is I'm, I'm super excited for her to, to see and feel that. 
That is great. Roberta, you know, each drive-on story has its own unique element to it, and there's something really special about that. What is it about Moe's that really drew you to her story and really made you want to have her a part of the LPGA's drive-on campaign? Yeah, and you know, storytelling is really an act of intimacy. So when somebody creates that openness and that trust, what the storyteller does is just listen and let the story reveal itself. And Mo's journey, I, I'm absolutely certain, is unique and gone. And there's so many elements that I love about this. In many ways, when people hear about golfers, they think of country clubs and they feel think about fairly exclusive uh, environments. And Mo's story is a journey of love at first swing and the dedication of a family and quite honestly, the kindness of strangers. So uh, it was really hard to get all of that into 30 seconds. So we settled on that emotional connection uh, with where her story began. And we'll let Mo and frankly, the, the career that lies ahead tell the rest of it. I'm going to open it up for questions from media members. So please, if you have a question, just uh, message me in the group chat. Um, but as I'm waiting to, to get some of these questions, Mo, I think one of the most powerful things to me of the entire piece is that line that you have where I believe we were all born perfect for what we were meant to accomplish in this lifetime. What is that? How did you even come about that saying? And what has that really meant to you? Uh, that came about in the initial interviews, you know, for this and, you know, being asked and, you know, given the space, just like Roberta was saying, to come up with, you know, what, you know, what, what's the bottom line to all of this. And, and that is just, that's something I've really believed, you know, and everybody I've met, I feel like has something incredibly unique um, that is his or her own. And um, no matter what, it's, it's a valid contribution. And I think you know, finding what that piece is and what your gifts are is, is such a, a wonderful part of this life. And yeah, it's something I truly believe. And where did that come from? I mean, I, I maybe that was a gift to me to understand that. And uh, my parents also just seeing value um, in everyone. And I, I think it's super important, like I said, uh, in my piece to, to really start from your strengths. And so I think, you know, just as a society, the more we focus on what we're doing right and um, the best parts of ourselves and share those, I think the better off we're all going to be. So that was, a, that was a line trying to capture, you know, how, how I felt in that sentiment. So Mo, you don't know this, but the last reveal we did was with Haley Moore just two weeks ago. And um, that's how I ended it, quoting your line that, you uh -huh. know, life has been very different from yours. Her journey has been very different, but she was born in a way to have the most impact, much like you have. So thank you for that. Well, amen. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We're going to open it up for questions. And the first one is from Randall Mel with Golf Channel. Randall? Oh, Randall. Okay. Hey, Mo, good to see you. Um, Great to see you too. Uh, a question just about your memories of winning at Birkdale, how do they come back to you? What's it like to have those memories? It's a treasure. Um, and I mean, oddly enough, it's kind of like when you reflect back on something, I mean, you, I can definitely, I can remember, remember so many of the shots I hit. I mean, even Thursday to Sunday, but I think what first comes back is um, the moments in between, you know, and the, uh, going into the locker room after I got done and eating a banana and, you know, just having a few words with myself and realizing I didn't, I wasn't really concerned with any, what anybody else was going to do. I was going to prepare myself for that playoff and go to the range. And then being on the range, I think I can remember every single drive I hit. Um, and also just stamping um, by the scoreboard afterwards and calling my mom and uh, hearing her say, you know, do you believe me now? You know, those are, those are the moments that are so powerful and, you know, burned into your memory and um, always that happy place you can go back to and remember the, the sights and the sounds and the smells and um, yeah. And then obviously hitting, hitting that last shot and also 
you know, I remember on the first day just making a clutch par putt, you know, on Thursday morning and that putt being just as important as the last one. And that's, you know, I, I don't think you're going to find somebody who loves golf more than I do. Um, but just golf being the great equalizer, you know, the game itself in so many ways. I'm just I'm a huge fan of. And following that up, and this is for you, Mo, and also Roberta, <clears throat> just the the whole drive on campaign, how are you sensing that maybe is impacting um, LPGA followers and maybe beyond in how it's connecting the tour? Uh, Roberta, do you want me to take that one? Go, go right ahead and then I'll follow up. Okay, sounds good. Um, I, yeah, I, I mentioned before the, the human piece um, and I think that that is, you know, at the end of the day, what connects us all when we all want to feel a, a sense of connection um, and a sense of, of worth. And I think the more stories you tell and the more diverse those stories are, I think the more we realize we have a heck of a lot more in common than, um, than not. And even if you're an athlete or not, uh, and I think, you know, Randall, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, I think people can see these pieces who don't play golf, who've never played in their life, and they could say, oh, you know, they can connect to that and they can, you know, come away with a, a positive feeling um, and then and learn something about us. And so it's, uh, it's a learning uh, both way. Um, and just, I think, you know, the more we can focus on the human pieces of, of athletes, the better. And, you know, I mean, we have so many characters on tour. And so I just love that our stories are being revealed more and more. And this is, this is honestly from my first time on the LPGA. I mean, I, I felt like we had so many different personalities and so many different stories. And my, my wish was that they got told and had that platform and you know it's coming true in a big way and roberta has been amazing um at providing us a wonderful platform and supportive and uh, really bringing out the best in all of us and randall i think part of the wisdom is knowing when you can't add anything so um <laughs> well okay um, i have more but i don't want to hog it up here i'll come back later thanks, thanks. randall Okay. Thanks so much, Randall. We're going to go next to Keely Levins from Golf Digest. Keely? Hey, everybody. Hey, Mo, how are you? Hi, Keely. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you, too. Um, I was just wondering if you could speak to how you're different now from how you were when you won that British Open. Like, you get to spend so much time thinking about those moments, and I'm just curious with time that has gone by in perspective, like how, how you've changed? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, obviously, I mean, I'll, I'll speak to something, um, you know, money wise, I was able to do some things uh, that I, that I wasn't before and provide stability. And, you know, I had, there was my mom's dog was super special to her, had, needed an expensive surgery, was able to do that, put a roof on my grandpa's ranch, um, do a lot of charitable things, um, both in Africa and here. Um, and also just, you know, part of my, my written piece, I talked about somebody who anonymously sponsored me and how I still think about that person. And so just being able to pay those things forward and uh, hopefully, you know, then having the platform uh, you know, to share a unique story and, and hopefully to have people realize that they don't have to be cookie cutter, you know, and keep up with the Joneses or be the Joneses. Um, and that, I, I, yeah, and at the end of the day, I mean, we have odds, you know, we have predictions, but that doesn't take into consideration the person. Um, and the person is the real thing that matters. Um, and we are all that person and we're all that, that perfect person. Um, so yeah, a lot more attention uh, from from the British, uh, which I'm a little bit bashful about, but I, I recognize um, the beauty and the power of being able to share my message. Um, and also just simply to thank the people that have been a part of my journey and to have to be able to broadly thank them. Um, another question, if that's okay. Um, 
when you when you talk about you know growing up as a non cookie cutter golfer, um, when you look at junior golf today, does it seem like there's been improvement in that? That like there is more diversity of backgrounds and types of people that are picking up golf. Do you think golf is doing a better job of that than it was when you were a junior? Absolutely, and I'm so happy about that. Um, and I think kids are getting involved at a younger age. Uh, when I started, there was no way you could find a glove that would fit a kid. Mm -hmm. And also shoes. Well, there are two reasons. We couldn't really afford the shoes, but uh, my dad just had a pair of street sneakers that he drilled holes in and then glued spikes into. And those were my golf shoes for many years. Um, and so I, I don't, yeah, I don't even think you could find, you know, these little cute golf shoes for kids. Um, but yeah, most importantly, you have a lot of programs um, that support inner city and um, you have you have scholarships out there that are just getting broader and deeper. Um, and I think, you know, I said this before, but golf is golf. The essence of golf is a great equalizer. And so I think, you know, the more people that um, can get started uh, and actually enjoy the benefits of this game, the better. And I've, I've definitely seen, you know, more young girls out there, uh, you know, growing up, you know, just being a female alone. It's like a lot of times I was the only female at the golf course. And, you know, I remember going to join a group and, you know, somebody being like, oh, I want to play fast, you know, and they said they didn't want to play with the girl because I was the only girl there. And then obviously that didn't end well for them because I said, well, I do too, so why don't I go? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I'm really proud to see the direction that golf is going in um, and also see a lot of young girls getting involved and it's the greatest game on the planet. So the more the merrier. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Next, we're going to go to Steve Eubanks. Steve? Hi, Mo. How are you? Hey, Steve. Good to Good see you. Hi. You. Um, your story really resonates with a lot of people because it is so eye popping uh, and the things that you had to overcome. You, you talked about your dad drilling the holes in the shoes and the, the little golf bag, sleeping on the pool furniture at an event, which you, which you discussed in your first person piece. I think most people look at that and, and are sort of taken aback by it. Was there a time when uh, you were growing up when you thought, gosh, if we only had more resources, um, boy, I really wish I was, you know, this other girl who had more. Uh, and how, during those times, did you overcome that? Uh, Steve, you hit the nail on the head and you've, uh, you're going to uncover another untold story. Um, I, yeah, I was actually, I, I think I, I had already walked on at UCLA and was playing. And I think there's just a, a natural fighter in me um, who, I, I guess I have some natural perseverance in me, which I can be incredibly thankful for. Um, but yeah, I was, I was running on a treadmill and I did, I kind of had this, I was aware of this thought that was like, gosh, I wish things had been different. And I thought if things had been different and if I had had X, Y, and Z, then maybe, but I actually, I stopped the treadmill and I actually started crying. Um, and I was just like, is that the, is that the way the story ends? And I, I think at that moment, I turned it around and I was like, how about because of X, Y, and Z, then my story is written. Um, and so I think it was a simple change in perspective. Um, and I think that's when I really started to believe, you know, we, uh, we start from our strengths um, and we take, you know, whatever cards are, are dealt and we make the most of them. And, you know, we, no matter what walk of life you come from, you're going to have your challenges. And I think sometimes the, the more you have, um, the easier it is uh, to look for more um, instead of be grateful for what you have and look for your strengths and look for the reasons why instead of why not. Um, so yeah, there, there was definitely a moment where I decided to, to change my mind on that and to really embrace you know, where I came from and what I did actually have and to make the most of that. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Next up, we have Greg Hardwing from the Naples Daily News. Hey, Mo. That's Greg. Great to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Are you here or in California? I'm in California. I've, uh, you know, 
got my doctors and uh, PTs here and then kind of got stuck here. Um, <laughs> right. here. Uh, you know, don't give up was is such an important part of your story. How hard has that been going through the injury part and, you know, keeping that that fighting spirit and where are you at and, you know, with your with your back situation and stuff? Yeah, I mean, another great question, you know, it's, uh, it's difficult when you've got aches and pains. Um, as an athlete, I mean, you need every inch of your body. Um, and I've, I've seen a lot of people try to play through injuries. And I don't think that's ever been successful. Um, so I, I, I've been real clear that I didn't want to play hurt. Um, I didn't want to do that to my body. And I uh, didn't think it was good for my game or, you know, the purposes of, of why I want to play and give back. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been, I've had my ups and downs, uh, but it really has made me miss golf even more. I uh, miss the outdoors, miss the fairways, miss the trees, miss uh, my fellow playing partners. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still here, still going, uh, and I, I feel great. So I'm, I'm really thankful to the people who have, uh, again, helped me. You know, it's been, a, it's been a journey with my back and a lot of diagnoses. Um, but, again, you know, that, that lesson is, is uh, in and out of every aspect of life, you know, to find the positives and keep going. And the fact that I'm 37 and still a professional athlete, I, um, I count my blessings every day. Thanks. All right, we're gonna go back to Randall. Okay, um, Mo, can you give us just an update on how your back is? And uh, we spoke a couple months ago and it was kind of a combination of with COVID that you weren't real comfortable coming back yet and part of it was your back. Um, how, how does that equation work right now? Yeah, I mean, still, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I, but like I said earlier on the call, I, I'm, I, I've been really careful with COVID and um, tried to stay away and, and hibernate. And that's also given me more time to rest and figure out what's going on with my back. And, um, you know, there's the more you look, the more it's like Pandora's box and you're going to find different things in, in your back if, you, if you're over the age of 30 and especially an athlete. Um, but yeah, it's being managed uh, with pretty minimal um, NSAIDs right now. So just a little bit of inflammation. Um, and some of the some of the worst things that it was possibly going to be have been taken off the table. So really happy about that. And uh, been back to full training. And um, I think in a lot of ways, my game is better than it was. Okay. Do you know when you might come back? Um, right now I'm looking at Portland, so a little less than a month. Um, mm -hmm. And that that would be, you know, a shorter trip from LA and a direct flight um and so i'm trying to look at the whole picture and try to travel the the least amount of miles um and just be safe in every way and, and responsible to everyone right now okay great thank you thank you all right i think we're going to go to our friend ophelia who's one of our girls golf members who's joined the call Ophelia, I know you have a couple questions, I think, for Mo. So we'll let you ask one and I'll just check if there's any other media members who have a question, please let us know and, and we can get those in in between Ophelia's questions as well. Ophelia? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, hi, Mo. My name is Ophelia Benoit. I'm 10 years old and I'm from Girls Golf and First Tee in Miami. Hi, that, what a great introduction and I love your name. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, thank you. I read about when your brother came home with a golf trophy when you were four years old and that's how you got into golf. When you were eight, you were invited to the World Japan Cup where you won a really big trophy and got to meet the Crown Prince of Japan. Here at the First Team Girls Golf Miami, we have nine core values and we have nine core values and five E's like engage, integrity, empower, and perseverance. You, at such a young age, had these values. Who do you think instilled those values in you? Oh, what a great question. Thank you. Um, well, my brother was my first hero, so I really wanted to do everything he did. Um, and so his love of golf inspired me and I was able to play and practice with him, um, which helped me fall in love with golf very quickly. 
Um, and I also, I met a lot of wonderful people along the way that really inspired me. Um, and my, my dad taught me um, how to be honest, uh, how to work hard, um, how to be accountable, and how to leave things better than when you found it. Uh, even if it's a chipping green or a putting green, you know, you, you clear it out, you fix your ball marks. And I think golf in and of itself, you know, teaches you a lot of those lessons too. Yeah. My, my, um, we do that too at the golf course. We always make sure that we, that none of the buckets are left there. We pick oh, them up and take them back to the pro shop. <laughs> Good. I'm so proud of you. Keep doing it. Thank you. Well, that's my first question. I have, I have two more, but if anybody wants to. <laughs> Ophelia, we're going to go to Sydney, another one of our girls golf members, and then I will come back to you too. Sydney, do you have a question for Mo? Um, were you nervous on your first golf tournament? Hi, Sydney. Yes, and you want to know a secret? I still get nervous on my tournaments, and I've played hundreds. Wow. So... I, I, I was nervous, but I was also really excited. And I think that's the fun part. Um, and I think when you do get nervous, I don't want you to believe that that's a problem. I think that's a really good sign. It means you care and it means you're excited. And I think you're gonna realize when you are nervous and you play golf, you're gonna play the best golf of your life. So you can embrace those little butterflies. That is some great advice, Mo. And I know we all have nerves and we should use them the best we can when we yeah. live. So I think we're gonna go back, Ophelia. I know you've got a couple more and we always love your questions. So we're gonna come back your way. So you just need to know, Mo, that Ophelia is a 40 year old veteran reporter in a 10 year old body. So. <laughs> I'm getting the gist, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, you played on a scholarship at UCLA. Your junior year, you were part of the Bruins NCAA National Championship. You were awarded Most Valuable Player in 2002 while earning your BA in Psychology with Academic Honors. I read that you thought it was, would be great to add a match play event. Can you talk to us about your college experience and the benefits of match play? The benefit, sorry, there was the last part of that, the benefits of match play? Yes. Oh, gosh, <laughs> you're right, Roberta. <laughs> She's owning the show. <laughs> um, yeah, I had such a fun time at, at UCLA, and um, part of that was walking on, uh, which means I didn't have a scholarship when I started, um, but I had a great coach who told me, you know, if you contribute to the team, if you have um, good, you know, academic grades, and if you contribute in every way, then I'll give you a scholarship, and she did. And Carrie is still the coach at UCLA. Um, they're still doing really well. Um, but, but match play, you know, we don't play a lot of uh, match play events here in America. Um, so kind of when I got to UCLA, it was, uh, it was new. Um, and, you know, I think it, even more so, it just kind of keeps you in the moment. And um, it's, it's really fun to watch on TV. So I'm really glad that since then, they have actually added uh, a huge match play event to College Golf. Uh, but I had such a fun time uh, with my teammates in college, and I still keep in touch. And um, they are some of my best friends, so my teammates there. Yeah, I hear uh, in Miami we have we do PGA Junior League, and it's a match <laughs> play. And it, it was my first time doing it. Now, I, the only time I had seen it, I was like Ryder's Cup, um, President's Cup, and I was like, I want to do that so bad. So we finally got to, we did it and I was, I was like, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> well good, I'm glad they're adding more tournaments. When I was younger, we didn't, I don't think I played match play until I went to college. So I'm glad they're being added and I'm glad you had fun and golf. Uh, there's so many ways you can enjoy golf. So during these difficult times of being quarantined, we've had the time to evaluate our lives and realize what is important. Do you think that it will make us change as a people and appreciate the beauty in nature and getting to travel and exploring different cultures and how has it changed you? Roberta, do you have a position for her already at the LPGA? I think she's already ready to go. <laughs> um, yeah, it would be mine. <laughs> 
Um, Ophelia, yes, I, you know, I, I was hoping in the beginning when this happened that, um, that we were going to take some positives uh, from it. And I have already seen some positives come from it. You know, I feel like people are learning, they can do things a little bit differently. They can do things more efficiently. Um, and I think we're just feeling more compassionate and, uh, you know, thinking about other people, thinking about our impact on the, the planet. Um, and also, I think being indoors, I think everybody's realized how much they really love being outdoors. Um, so yeah, maybe just a reminder, you know, to respect our planet and, um, you know, to take care of uh, Mother Earth and to be good to each other, which at the end of the day, I mean, those are the most important things we can do. Yeah. Thank you for inspiring this little girl by sharing your story. We're all born, we are all born perfect for what we were meant to accomplish in this lifetime. I will cherish that quote forever. Thank you. Oh, Ophelia, it was my pleasure. Thank you and good luck. I'll be looking out for you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, typically I ask an ending question, but I don't think I can get any better than how Ophelia just ended things for us. So. I want to just thank Roberta and Mo so much um, for taking part in this. Thank you to all the media members for helping to tell Mo's story to an even broader audience. I think it's so special for us in every drive on story of what we do and how that relates. And as Mo said it so perfectly with that human uh, element that connects us all. Um, and again, that quote about um, being perfect for what we were meant to do in this lifetime. I think Mo is something that's going to live on well beyond um, your drive on spot and something that's really, really special. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Appreciate it. And Mo, we can't wait to see you in Portland. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks everyone for being here. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.